Hi y'all, it's Miss Martin. Welcome to Miss Martin's virtual learning. Read aloud. So every day you're going to be clicking on a link. It's going to send you to YouTube and there's going to be a video of me doing a read aloud with a book. So it's going to be kind of like in class. So for our book today, you'll see that we're going to be reading this book. I first want you to just look at the cover. From the cover, I'm wondering what you guys predict this book, what the title is. If you'd like to take a moment, pause the video, and think about what the title might be. I predict the title will be blank based upon the illustration on the front cover. Are you ready to hear the title? <laughs> the title is Food Around the World, <laughs> which I bet you can see there's different types of food on this um, illustration. And they all seem to be probably not American food, probably foods from around the world. So here we have on the first page, we have a, a table of contents. Remember, a table of contents lets us know if we wanted, let's say we wanted to look up a certain topic. Mm, let's say we want to look at what's for breakfast. We would then go to that page number. So a table of contents tells us what page number certain topics of the book are on. So for instance, we have festival food is page 12. Miss Martin's gonna start off with the beginning. All kinds of food. You guys can look right here. Are you ready to find out about the food eaten by children around the world? You'll learn what people eat at mealtimes. Plus, You'll find out what they eat and drink on special days. There's a whole world to discover. If you look right here, there's a little um, image of some Thanksgiving food. What foods can you see at this American Thanksgiving? Find out on page 13. Different fruits grow in each country. Learn the name of this one on page 20. So you see right here, this is an image of a different sort of fruit. You can go to page 20 to find what the name of it is. Right here it says, discover the story behind this Indian lunch dish on page 8. And then over here, we, have, we see some people start the day with sweet foods. Find out about this tree on page 6. And down here, we have, can you picture eating a Cambodian fried tarantula? Find out more on page 29. On the bottom, it says, take a trip around the world to learn, out, to learn about food eaten by children just like you. Right now, I'd like you to really look at how this page is structured. What, when I say structured, I mean, how is it organized? These pages are very interesting or, um, interestingly organized. What I notice and I see, so take a moment, maybe pause the video and really look at these pages to see how they are structured. What I see is that they're structured in a certain way. They're structured to demonstrate you have this big map in the middle. It draws our attention, that map. We're probably wondering, huh, I wonder why they put a map there. If you look closely, you can see the map is shown because it wants us to see the relationship between the image and where it comes from. So for instance, right here, this image is an image of, um, lunch in India. So if we look in the map, we can see, oh, there's a country that must be India. 
So you're kind of making inferences about the relationship between the image and where it's pointing to on this map. I'm wondering though, on this page, oops, sorry, the wind. <laughs> on this page, I'm wondering what first drew your attention? Look all over it. What first drew your attention? Maybe pause the video, really look at it to see what first draws your attention. Okay. And how did it make you feel? Maybe that image it, that drew your attention. How does this whole page make you feel? Take a moment to just look at it and to reflect upon how all these different captions and these images are making us feel. Going on to the next page. What's for breakfast? This reminds me of people always saying breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Let's see what, what's for breakfast all across the world. This lady right here is serving up a Vietnamese bowl of breakfast. It's a noodle soup called pho. It's a spicy broth made with chicken or beef and rice noodles. Hmm. It takes many hours to boil up a good pho broth. And then down here we have, does chocolate for breakfast sound good? I think so. Make sure you try churros from Spain. They are often served with chocolate sauce for dipping. Here you can see in this image, it has a caption down here. Remember, what does a caption do? Take some time to answer this question. What is a caption used for? You're right. A caption is used to describe the picture. And tell us, give us some more information about the picture. It says right here, churros can be dipped in hot chocolate or milky coffee. Hmm. And then over here, we see it says in Central America, corn tortillas are often eaten at breakfast. Tortillas can be used in lots of ways. They can be wrapped around meat or eggs. They can be cut into strips and fried. They can be baked too. This reminds me of my breakfast this morning. I actually had a breakfast taco and I used a tortilla and I wrapped it and I put some eggs in it too. So you see right here in this image, it shows us basically what Ms. Martin had for breakfast. It says, this is a Mexican breakfast dish. A tortilla is topped with tomatoes, beans, rice, and eggs. And you're probably wondering, well, can you tell us a little bit more about this girl? What is this girl holding? There's a caption to describe and give us information about what she's doing. This Guatemalan girl holds a bowl of corn paste. It would be flattened and cooked to make tortillas. What I'm thinking right now is what inferences can we make about all of these images? What sort, what are you seeing in these images? What sort of relationship do you see between these images? How are the, all these images connected? Or how are they contrasting? How are they different? What I see is in all three of these images, so we have, we have the one in uh, Vietnamese right here, then we have it in Spain, and then we have in Central America. I see in all of these images, they're contrasting how three different countries have their breakfast. They're demonstrating for us this contrast by showing people and those people who are making the food for breakfast. Going on to the next meal of the day. What's for lunch? These little piles right here of spicy Indian food are called chiat. The story goes that a doctor invented chiat because it was used to cure an Indian emperor called Shah Jahan. In India, spices are thought to be healthy medicine. 
huh, that's very different than how I thought about spices. This chat lunch rests on a banana leaf. So you see, instead of, how is this different from, how is this different from what your meals rest on? Think about that for a second. You look a little bit closer. Also think about what do we use spices for? In Japan, children often take bento boxes to school for lunch. Bento boxes contain small amounts of different foods. Making kawaii bento boxes is popular in Japan. In this kind of box, the food is made into pictures. Let me, let me move it over so you guys can see. Cute in Japanese. So, oh, sorry. Kawaii means cute in Japanese. So this right here is called a kawaii bento box. That means a cute bento box. I'm wondering how they did this. How did they make it look so kawaii? You can start using that in your everyday language when you see something cute. Oh, you'd be like, that's really kawaii. <laughs> a normal bento box might contain sushi. Sushi is in a roll with raw fish. So here's a normal one down here. You guys can see that? Whoa, there's a normal one. And here is the kawaii one, the cute one where they shaped it. And then over here, this girl is from Mozambique in Africa. She's having a common African lunch. She's eating rice and beans that have beans. Uh, the beans are in a spicy stew. And then we have a caption right here. Different kinds of rice and bean dishes are served all over Africa. What I'm wondering is how do you guys first react when seeing these meals? So on this top right here, we have what looks to be an Indian meal. And then on the bottom, we have the bento boxes in uh, Japan. And then over here, we have the African dish of um, rice and beans in a spicy stew. So how do you guys first react? And I want you to think, why do you feel this way? Take a second to pause the video and think about how am I feeling about these meals? And why do I feel this way? I also wonder, and I would like you guys to make an inference. Right here, it was talking about India. What can you infer India, or why does India use spices? Hmm. Complete this sentence. I can infer India uses spices because, take a moment, you're right. They use spices because they believe that it can help you become more healthy. It has certain vitamins. It's almost like a medicine. So if you were feeling maybe sick, that's when you would put more spices into your food. I want you also to think about this. How does your lunch contrast with all these other lunches? Remember, contrast means how is it different? Take a moment, think about it. My lunch is uh, contrast with it is different because I, right here, we have the fish and the sushi rolls. I don't eat fish. I don't eat any meat anymore. So I probably couldn't eat what these people in Africa eat either because they have like a meat stew. So I would have a different, I would use rice and beans though, but I wouldn't have all that meat in there. That's how mine contrasts. Also, I don't have little cute animals in my lunch. I, don't, I love how they were able to shape their food, but I've never been able to do that. Something else that is, I would say, I want you guys to think about this now. What's similar? That means, how are these lunches the same as your lunch? Take a moment, think about it. So my lunch is the same or similar because um, if I compared my lunch to the Indian lunch right here, I do use a lot of rice and spices. I love to put some spices on my lunch. 
on my rice especially. And then the last page that we're going to be reading for today What's, what's the last meal of the day? Dinner. So what's for dinner? Have you had pasta for dinner? I definitely have. Pasta was first made in Italy almost 1,000 years ago. At that time, they used lettuce juice to give the pasta a green color? Pasta is now the most popular food in the world. If you see right here, there's a little caption. This girl is having little strings for dinner. That's what spaghetti means. Spaghetti actually means little strings. That makes so much sense to me now. There are around 500 different kinds of pasta, each with its own Italian name. Oh my gosh, 500, wow. And then over here, it says, in the icy far north of Canada, there aren't many shops or restaurants. People hunt for their food. This Nunavut boy is catching Arctic char through a hole in the ice. So char is a sort of fish as you look down here. You can see the image is of the fishes he has caught. The Arctic Ocean is covered in this, here's our caption. The Arctic Ocean is covered with ice for most of the year. The none of it cut holes in the ice. So that's where we see a little hole right here. And then they go down deep and that's where they get the fish. On this page, it tells us a little bit about his dinner. This Tunisian boy, uh, that's in Africa, is buying spices in an outdoor market. These spices will be used to flavor his dinner or kwaski. Kwaski is couscous served with spicy meat and vegetables. If you look closely, here's a example of kwaski which is commonly eaten in Tunisia, which is in Africa. So they, and they put couscous, which is like a certain type of rice, and then they put, or grain, and then they put meat and vegetables. Down here, it tells us harissa is a common Tunisian spice. It is a spicy paste made of roasted peppers and dried spices. So that's what's in these big bins is um, different types of spices that they would put into their food. It's kind of like a condiment. So a condiment, maybe you put ketchup or mustard or soy sauce in your food. They put a lot of different types of spices. Now my question is, class, what are some of your wonders after reading about all the different countries and their dinner? Take a moment, pause the video, write those wonders down. You want to know what I wonder? I wonder, what are some of the names of the pastas? They said that they had 500. I also wonder, why are there 500? That's so many. And then I also wonder down here, in, uh, it talked about in Alaska, or Canada, sorry, in Canada, what if they can't find any fish? What if they can't fish any of them? What happens then? I don't know. I wonder what they eat then for dinner. So this pretty much wraps up our reading for today. Right now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get a piece of paper out. And after you're done getting that piece of paper out, maybe pause the video. I gotta get my piece of paper out. Oh, I got it. It's my whiteboard. What I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to finish this sentence and on your piece of paper, write down some of what you wonder. So I wonder, I put different bullet points so you could write different wonders down. What else I'd like you to do is on your next piece of paper, or if you're doing this in a journal on your next part of the journal. Next page. I'd like you to write down what it reminded you of. What are, this, what are these pages or the story that we've read so far, what did it remind you of? That's all we're going to be doing today. Um, make sure that you then, you look at the chart. So our next step is step five. It's an inference chart. On your inference
orange chart, you're going to be telling me, and you're going to be making a T chart. You're going to tell me what you observed. So I observe from the book, from our book. <laughs> and what you inferred. So we have two different sections. I observe, then I infer. Please write those down. The chart is um, on the next link on the Clever page. I hope this helped y'all. Uh, thank you for spending time with me. I miss y'all. Can't wait to do a Zoom call and see everyone in person. Uh, hopefully you guys like my face and my cool Metallica shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great band. You should listen to it. If your parents let you, though. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.